Welcome to episode 85 of our Road to Unicum. Today I review the RU-251. This is the tier 9 German light tank in World of Tanks and this and the tier 10 light tank, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, were two of the most requested tanks and so I actually hadn't played this tank for a long time. I played about I think I'm close to 300 battles in this tank back when it was a tier 8 and then hadn't played it since then. Actually of, of the tanks that are now the current tier 9, this one was my least favorite, although I think my first impression of the tank was a bit too harsh and I'm enjoying it much more uh, the second time around playing it in the post 9.18 world. Uh, I'm really excited to show you and talk to you guys about this new map. This is a province and I'll start by pointing out what people dislike about the map. The big ground floor field is a huge kill zone and only a complete moron would go down there. Now our bat chat 25T is on the ground floor. I'm actually not a big fan of going down there only because it can be hard to exit. There's like big gaps in terms of hardcover but uh, what I do in light to medium tanks is come and play these ramps. Now this map is a mirror so basically if you're you know if you're playing from the south spawn you just do the exact opposite of what I'm doing and by being in this position here I can both spot their heavies that are crossing along the H and J lanes to go on offense and we can get flanking shots so you know I've already worked in a little bit of damage and we've beat up their type 5 heavy and also put some uh, pretty meaningful damage on their super conqueror which is played by a uh, super unicum or at least a, a guy who rolled and is now super unicum so the other thing to think about on this map is the extent of crossfire so really there are three primary areas you can play in. and right here by the way the super conqueror he's crossing the gap with those bushes but because heavies have you know very poor camo I can spot him now I'm firing and not getting lit and part of that has to do with their 1390 in my opinion he's not doing the right thing he should be in the bushes on the opposite side trying to counter spot me and to spot our heavy tanks that are eventually pushing you know up north of me where the object 277 is now you need to be careful there's a hairpin turn so that IS-3 and the object 277 they have to pass behind me to make the hairpin curve a turn right and then go north right? and while they're doing that because they're heavies they're very liable to be spotted if their 1390 were actually spotting correctly but the nice thing about this area there's a huge row of bushes and you notice earlier I knocked down the tree sometimes I'll do that to thicken the bush cover if you knock down a tree it essentially acts like a bush now obviously you want to employ some common sense here like if there's one tree standing in the middle of a very big open area you don't want to knock down the tree and sit behind it because everyone will know where you are but in an area here where there's a huge expanse of bushes I like to make that bush cover you know pretty thick and even if I didn't knock down the trees it still offers really meaningful camouflage right and the nice thing is both ends of these rows of bushes is bordered by a wall so this has the trifecta of hard cover adjacent soft cover and a good field of view now what I'm doing here is very risky for the simple reason that there are gaps in between these bushes and rocks and so I've been spotted and part of the problem is I'm coming up here a little too early and so now they know where I am and I have to sit here and wait until I'm no longer lit by the tanks that are on the eastern side of the map but you know this AMX M4 knows where I am he's pushing down the hill on me which he should do he can bully me I don't have armor but he does and so I'm having to scramble and run away and unfortunately I'm crossing two open gaps here to create distance and their super conqueror nails me the fire extinguisher you know puts out the fire but I take over 500 damage so now I've lost like you know 900 850 900 hit points it really limits what I'm going to be able to do by the way uh, it is totally worth using exclusively the auto fire extinguishers in terms of instead of the manual ones because in my opinion the auto ones will you know reduce the number of fire uh, damage taken ticks to one and that will conserve your hit points prevent you from getting module damage and those things will help you stay alive and win the battle which will help pay for the difference in price between the manual and automatic fire extinguishers. Now a big part of this map really is about you know who's spotting correctly on the ramp up and you know, I did a pretty solid job already worked in about 3.2 uh, or 3.1 damage contributed uh, but really it's about the other place you can go aside from where I was on the the rampy road are the vertical lanes the 8-9 and the 2-3 and those are more kind of uh, offensive or defensive like in this case like this shelf is our defense and then where our object 277 is that's where you know the offense is and the interesting thing about these shelves because they're elevated 
they're exposed are big gaps in buildings. Like where I'm right here, if I'm spotted, I could potentially get shot at by their snipers on the other side of the field. So you have to be really careful about your position, you know. And th this was this was true of the old crappy uh, province map. Now, because I'm so close to these tanks, and there's no bush cover as I was leaning out, they spot me at the same time, same time I spot them. So, you know, me being a light tank offers no advantage there, and I kind of stupidly leaned out a second time, and the Super Conqueror shot at me, and thankfully only damaged, you know, a module. But in that case, like, there is one very noticeable uh, downside of this tank. Well, really, two. One, the, the tank is very squishy, right? And, and you'll get penned by high explosive. The other thing is that the gun depression off the front of the tank is only five degrees. Now, it is much higher on the sides of the tank. It's like 10 degrees. But what this means is that if you're ridge fighting, sometimes you'll need to kind of lean over and aim your gun off to the side of your hull, either to the left or to the right, in order to be able to get your gun down on the target. And in some cases where there's like a gradual incline, it's okay, and you can safely do so without exposing your hull. But in other cases, because you are you know, shooting sideways, you might be exposing your track wheel. Now, the important thing here is that we don't have anything covering the middle of our plateau. So we don't have any coverage around... You know, e E89, and so uh, they're going to spot us around the same time that we're going to spot them, except for the fact that we've got these bushes. You can see I'm desperately trying to get our Artie to back up, and this is something which just drives me nuts. People just not paying attention to the map. Like, right now they've got, probably have an advantage in hit points, and they certainly have an advantage in terms of having beefier tanks remaining. So, you know, what we've got to do is play the vision game here. And the Bat Chat and I, thankfully the Bat Chat is almost at full hit points. Now granted, he was lit and took one splash from Artie so they know where he is. But I'm in such like double and triple bush cover here that even when I'm firing, I'm still getting the camo benefit from these bushes. And this allows us to take down the 1390 without our taking any damage. And now this is huge because now we can play vision games. Now our Bat Chat 25T is reloading, which I think is the right play. But what it means is that it's going to be up to me and then our... Ramatop Borsig to provide the offense. And then thankfully, uh, the TD tracks their defender, and so this is going to be you know, really easy for me to just continue working him, shooting that front drive wheel, and then put him down. Okay, so game is tight again. Now their Super Conqueror has pushed up, and he's threatening our tank destroyer. And so I have to go and help out. The Super Conqueror still has got a lot of hit points left, and you know the safest and easiest time to engage a scary beefy tank like this is while he's preoccupied with somebody else. And then thankfully, like, our bat chat is coming around. I actually don't have a, a particularly good field of fire there because there's some intervening cars. And then our bat chat just runs right up on him, which is the right thing to do because, you know, he's got an autoloader. Uh, I'm trying not to overexpose myself because I'm a little concerned about arty fire. The prior shot missed. Uh, I snapshotted it, so that last shot I took the time to fully aim in and make sure to get that kill shot. Okay, so we've clawed back the lead, which is great. Part of the problem is that our tanks who were playing offense on their 2-3 lanes really didn't get very far, right? And, you know, we, we lost our last heavy a while ago, and their AMX M445 hasn't left the spot that he stopped at, you know, when he came down to chase me. Now, I'm not a big fan of what our LTGB doing, is doing because he cannot one-shot the AMX. The AMX is behind hardcover, so our already bat chat and I can't hit him. So there's nothing to be gained for the LTGB to spot him unless he's trying to work for his own shot. But, of course, if he does that, he can't one-shot the AMX, but the reverse is certainly true. All right, so our Bat Chat rushes in. Very risky play, but the Type 5 doesn't penetrate him. And so now the Bat Chat can unload his clip and take out their Tier 10 Heavy. And remember, that was the same Type 5 Heavy who, because he was moving along the J lane a little bit too close to the buildings, in my opinion, were able to work a lot of early damage on him. And really, the damage on that Type 5 Heavy and that Super Conqueror were critical in terms of influencing what's happening or how this late game situation plays out. So our LTTP pushes up and takes out their Amex M4, but you know, he makes himself an easy target for the Ferdinand. And here, for some inexplicable reason, I turn on auto-aim. It's totally not necessary. The problem with auto-aim is it center masses on the target, but because they already pull back a little bit behind hardcover, it, that, that basically put the auto-aim reticle just a midpoint right above the rock, and so the shot missed. That I, I don't even know why I use auto aim there. The only time you, you generally want to use auto aim is when you're driving so fast that you can't shoot or can't aim well when you're on the move. And especially if you've either got a really large target or a really soft target, just put auto aim on, and then you can concentrate on driving so you don't, you don't run into a rock like I just did there. Okay, so 
you know, obviously this is a, a 2v2 situation. Uh, the, the, the challenge is like, the instinct by most light tank drivers is, oh, I've got to flank everything in sight, right? Uh, the, the issue with this is, depending on where the Ferdy is located, he may spot me at a distance, uh, so that means that I won't be able to get close without him seeing, seeing my approach, and if I'm moving and he's standing stationary, he's probably going to have a better first shot advantage than I am, plus they already will know where to pre-aim because they'll know, well, I'm either behind this building or that building, which means I can only exit off one side of the building, right? So we've still got time, still five minutes left, no need to rush, and I, I think, you know, one thing I've noticed about a lot of players is they simply don't have good clock management. You know, they always you always hear about clock management in sports. It's the same thing in a game. You know, you, you don't want to rush and force things when you don't have to. And part of the challenge is if I push down the 2 3 lane and engage the Ferdy solo, you know, it's going to be a one versus two. It's going to be me versus two of them unless the Ferdy is sitting out from a building where our already can hit him, right? So obviously, I don't want to force a one versus two. That would be stupid. And, you know, I want to leverage, you know, the vision control advantage if I can. Now, there have been people, you know, kind of indicating that I should go to the cap. And it's funny, the knee-jerk reaction in a lot of situations by most red, orange, yellow, green players is to go jump on the cap as if it's an automatic I win button, and it's not. Now, in this particular case, because I wasn't able, I, I took the time to see if I could spot the Ferdinand and get an idea of where he might be, and there already is very likely down in the southwest corner of the map, southwest of their spawn, sitting somewhere in those bushes or those rocks, right? So the funny thing about that is I can't even get up there necessarily. Even if I were to go up this hill along the H and J lanes, it's very likely that they're already would outspot me because I need to cross open ground. He's sitting in a bush, right? So this is one of the few situations where capping actually makes sense. And so what I need to figure out in real time that this map is that, you know, I wasn't sure how this cap would play out. Now, the obvious place to cap would be to sit behind this rock, especially if you're in a tank that has uh, no camo. But the problem with this is, is I can't see anything, right? So if their Ferdinand rushes down the hill, he could get close enough to the rock to proxy spot me, and then we're in a 50-50 situation because we both know where the other guy is, right? And so what I'm going to do, I noticed there's some bushes here on the south and the eastern side of the cap. I'm going to go ahead, and there are a lot of bushes, so it's not just like one bush that they could try to blind fire, but there are a lot of bushes. Now, a lot of people might stop at the back bush on the cap, right? Although, like, Rationally speaking, if I were to get a blind fire bush, I'd, I'd pick the furthest bush on the opposite side of the cap because that's where people would, and you can see it, they actually shot back there. This is like kind of a, a guessing game. I'm, I'm actually doing what's a little counterintuitive. And if you do this in a public match with me and you're not in a light tank, then I would get really frustrated. Like sometimes what you'll see is friendlies trying to cap and sitting on the near edge of the cap, especially when they're not in camo, not under cover especially if they're in a tank that has no camouflage and then they just make it easy for themselves to get spotted early and then reset. Now what I'm waiting for is the Ferdinand to get a little closer. I don't want to let him get so close that he spots me due to the, the short distance, you know, proxy spotted, but I was also waiting to see if I already could work a shot in on him, which he did. And you know, this guy's now burned his, I think he burned his uh, first aid kit and right there he just burned his repair kit because I tracked him. So now if I track him again, he can't do anything. The only risk I have coming around this building right here is that they're already maybe aiming and firing, but I've made it around the corner and I don't stop. I just This is a case where I turn on auto aim because I don't need to aim for his track. I need to be worried about their arty because in that case, the Ferdinand's not going to be able to hold traverse. He's not going to be able to turn fast enough to get his gun on me. And then, as I was expected, their arty's coming. I keep this rock between us. I'm going to wait a little bit and just kind of sit here until, okay, so now we both de-rendered and now he can't see me, right? He might, he, he has to guess whether I'm going to my left or toward, toward my right. And what I'm going to do here is make sure not to knock down any trees so he doesn't have any visual indicators about my approach and then see if I can just spot him or get behind him. In this case, he rushed downhill thinking maybe I'm still there. I, I don't know what he was thinking, but at this point, you know, the game is already over. So I actually find this map to be a lot of fun. Uh, it, again, I, I fully recognize that the ground floor, that middle area of the map is a complete kill zone. So you could argue it's, it, there isn't a lot to do there, but the other lanes offer a lot of really interesting flank and fire opportunities. And then, you know, props to the Bad Chat, you know, he played really well in terms of, you know, helping to take out their 1390, their Super Conqueror, and then their Type 5 Heavy. And I was able to pull four and a half thousand damage in the RU. I think this is my best uh, best XP game and damage game ever. And certainly was, was a good example of, you know, trying to how to use the, the different areas of the map. And then especially um, going and playing defense at the right time so that we could counter their push 
and save our arty. So I'm going to be also uh, reviewing the Sheridan and also the AMX 5100. Let me know your feedback and thoughts on this video. Take care.